Now we head to the Preakness, a mile and three sixteenths, grade mm -hmm. one, yeah. million five, and obviously everybody in the world's going to be rooting for the three California Chrome. Obviously, yes. And going back in time and time again, I mean, especially in his past three races, the San Felipe, the Santa Anita Derby, the Kentucky Derby, it just has not looked like he has really exerted himself to his full potential, in my opinion. Coming down the lane, I know they did go pretty slow fractions in the Derby, but it just looked like he had a lot more left to offer. Victor Espinosa tapped him once, and I do remember uh, Willie Delgado, he told me uh, a couple days ago um, that he asked him why, why would he, you know, whip the horse down the lane considering mm -hmm. that he was doing it relatively easy. Player, right? He just said he was losing attention out on the front end. So um, I'm excited to see. Of course, I see. think Victor was losing attention too because yeah. he was waving to the crowd. And all <laughs> well, the exactly. But, um, you know, I think he's a very, very talented horse. He's been taking a liking to the surface. All of the connections have said what a transformation he's made from Churchill to Pimlico. He just seems to glide over the surface in the morning. So right. I'm going to go with California Chrome. I'm a California Chromie, I guess is what they're saying okay. nowadays. Um, the 10 ride on Curlin, I'm going to give a slight edge and throw him into my exacta probably because you do, if you go back and watch the Derby, he did get into a lot of trouble. Yes. He was nine wide. But one really interesting thing that I actually found on Twitter, uh, it was tweeted by Trackus, is that he, although the bad trip, he actually ran the fourth shortest trip right? in the Derby. Yeah. Interesting. And I thought that was extremely interesting considering the nine wide. Uh, trip in the final turn. So I think you should bring that up to his trainer Billy Gowan and, <laughs> and see how Billy responds to that. Yeah, that I would bet be. he'd have some choice words for a track. Or something. Yeah, exactly. That would be interesting. But that's what track has said. That said, um, I think this is a legitimate horse that's going to stalk from off the pace here. I mean, he's going to be closing late. My concern with Kid Cruz is that they've been going such slow fractions in front of him in his past two starts. How far back is he going to be when social inclusion guns it? Right. Now, it, you mentioned Kid Cruz. I mean, he's a horse that I feel like he's becoming a little bit of a wise guy horse. Mm -hmm. here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. And like I said, I think he's going to have to Today's obviously Preakness, but it's his true test. How fast can he go? Because he's another one. I don't think he's fully exerted himself, right. that said. But with the amount of pace that's in this race, I'm really worried that he's going to be so far back and be kind of caught off guard. He does have a win over the track, which is impressive. And if you look at his, uh, go back and look at the replays, it doesn't look like he's going to make that closing run and then all of a sudden something clicks and he just fires and it's a really impressive visually yeah so um he's gonna have to do that though because this is going to be a big test for him do you think this is going to be how do you see the pace scenario setting up here i mean do you think it's going to be like a melting down pace or just a lively pace or, or i think it all depends on social inclusion i mean i think that he's the fastest on paper in my opinion i think that he could probably clear mm -hmm. um is he going to last is the big question is right. there going to be a cavalry charge behind him is, is the big question um you know the way he's been training in the morning he's been training very well here but um it's it's a big question. Excuse me while I stop no. my phone from ringing. Um, um, okay, are there any others here? Sort of a, a actually, as it turns out, everybody's at a price except for California Chrome, who's three to five <laughs> in the morning line. So you, if he doesn't win, you're going to be pretty, and you bet on the winner, you're going to be pretty happy with how that turns out. But are, are there any of these others that you look at and you say this is a horse that um, has a chance here? I, you know what's interesting, I'm not necessarily choosing her, but uh, the filly, you know, uh, no one has talked about her, in my opinion. I mean, do you, do you have any thoughts on her? Because everyone that I've talked to has not even given her any consideration. My thought is that I wouldn't bet on her with your money. <laughs> Uh -huh. There is no force on earth would, that would get me to bet on her, and I'll tell you why. One, I mean... Her, her sort of signature victory is by disqualification. Yes. The only time she actually ever won a race, won one, 
was, was against me. Breaking our maiden, yeah. yeah. And then two, I don't know what they're doing here. I mean, this this is a spot that makes no sense, but you know, sometimes with you know with some connections, they do something that makes no sense. And you go, these guys are pretty smart. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing here, but I got to pay attention. Nothing they've done with this horse has made any sense through mm -hmm. her entire career, as far as I can tell. I agree. And and then the third thing is, where's Tommy Amos? He's not at Pimlico. Nope. He's been at Churchill all week while his horse has been up here. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that's it. And he's not supposed to come down till late tonight, I believe. It's it's very interesting. I I I agree with that. One other horse that I guess there are two other horses that I think are kind of intriguing. The five Bayern. Bob Baffert, very good with horse taking blinkers off, okay? And I have looked at this horse time and time again in the Derby trial, Arkansas Derby. It doesn't look like he can get this distance, in my opinion. Right. However, with the blinkers off, maybe they're going to take the tactic to maybe take him off the pace a little bit, relax. We could see a different horse that has a little bit more energy in the later stages of the race. So I think that's kind of an intriguing play, but if he does show early speed and he's running off with Rosie on the front end, that's going to be a big concern for me. I um, agree with that. I, the distance is a, is a, is a big real concern. question mark here. Mm -hmm. And General A-Rod, everyone just kind of kicked him to the curb uh, after the Derby. I haven't heard much talk of General A-Rod since then. And all considering, he was actually, there was, there was a little bit of hype, I guess, going into the Derby. They did say that he was not training uh, very well at Churchill. Uh, I think he's kind of like a an underdog here. Perhaps he just really thrived at the Gulfstream surface, you know, mm -hmm. given his nice early speed. Um, perhaps that's the case because, you know, his other races are just okay outside of Gulfstream. Um, but maybe he's another underdog. I don't know. I do. The, the issue I see with General A-Rod, and I, I'm curious as to your response to this, I mean, he, it feels to me like each time they've stretched out the distance, he's a little less good, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you have, to me, you have this sort of ready comparison, with, which is Wildcat Red. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he beat Wildcat Red at a mile, at a flat mm -hmm. mile around one turn in the Gulfstream Derby. Then he lost to him, again, by an inch, going a mile and a sixteenth in the Fountain of Youth. Then he lost to him by a length and a half, going a mile and an eighth in the Florida Derby. Mm -hmm. And then they were both up the track in Kentucky, which is what it is. But yeah. it feels to me like Wildcat Red is sort of a helpful measuring stick there. and. Mm -hmm. it, suggests that this horse may not get that distance. I mean, but also, I, I I do agree with that. I mean, Wildcat Red just so fast, and I think that was kind of like to his demise um, in, in the Derby, but um, I'm, I am fully confident in California Chrome. I mean, I, I really am. I think he is the talented, the most talented in this field here. Um, there's some question marks with social inclusion you know i'll mm -hmm. probably use him third but he's been physically training well in the mornings but there have been uh some interesting strategies that they the connections have taken in the morning you know like um just for example you know jogging with the blinkers on just Right. Interesting things, which have worked for Manny Aspera for decades. I'm not taking anything right. away for that. Right. Right. Um, and obviously, he's a talented horse as well. Um, so it's I do the two horses that I think have been training the best here, in my opinion, California Chrome and Ride on Curlin. Yeah, I was very impressed by his work here. Yeah, Ride on Curlin. Yeah, I think Ride on Curlin is he's he's legit. I'm gonna throw in for me. I. I think Kid Cruz is going to run a good race here, and, and I'm hopeful you're going to get a big number. I, I had a conversation with Linda Rice, his trainer, uh, the other night, and the thing she said to me that, that really has stuck with me is, she said, my rule is we don't go to a, we don't travel to a stake unless we're five to one or less. Mm -hmm. They're 20 to one here, but they're still here. To me, that says that they think they might be liver than 20 to one. Now, she's... She sort of said some stuff to back away from that a little bit today. I mean, I think she kind of said, well, you know, maybe we're more of a Belmont horse or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think they think he's going to run a good race, and I don't think they'd be here if they didn't think he's going to run a good race. I agree. I mean, it just seems like he's improving each and every time. Like I said, the biggest concern here 
is the pace that's going to be in front of him. And if it doesn't slow down, he's going to be pretty far <laughs> back there. And do. he's going to have a lot of work to do. So if they go quick early fractions and they maintain those or those strong fractions throughout, it's it's going to be very difficult to kind of overcome that hurdle. Yeah. But if not, you know, if there is, if social inclusion doesn't go out there, make the lead, and there's a whole bunch of horses on the front end kind of dueling, it's going to set up for Kid Cruz, and that I I think he's dangerous, and that I'm going to use him in my exotics for okay. sure. So, if you're playing a, a horizontal here, singling the three or a three and ten, or something else that I missed. Do you really want to single a three to five? I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess, but it is horse racing. If this is if this is where you're saving money on your ticket, I guess you could single the three California Chrome. I do think that he's such a versatile horse, you know, he's he's done most everything that they've asked him to. Um, so I'm going to go, I would single the three, okay. quite honestly, but if you're trying to look for some gimmick wagers again, Kid Cruz, I think is legit 10 right on Curlin, and uh, I'm still a little bit intrigued by Bayern. Okay. I am. There you have it. Bit. So you could single the three, you could go three ten, or you can do some other stuff. I would single. I mean, I I would. I think he's a legitimate contender, California Chrome, coming into uh, Preakness. I I felt like I I said this before the Derby. I said if he wins the Derby, he wins the Preakness too. He he runs like a horse who wins the Preakness. Mm -hmm. You know, he stock pounds win. Yep. And, and that's the way to win this race. Yeah. So there it is, Gabby Godet's picks. Mm -hmm. We'll write them down so that we don't have to remember them. But. <laughs> That's our story. Let's hope Thank it's you. successful. Let's hope that. That would be good. I'm for that. <laughs>